Perfect. Um, so I would have loved to have John and, and Jim here, Jim being the, uh, the manager of this group. Um, they're all busy with the MVPs today. But um, like, like Michael said, in, in Microsoft and the product group now, we kind of have changed. Uh, there's more people coming in that has a background for working with Vista for a long time. Both me and John were former MVPs. Um, we're really passionate about integration in general. And we really want to make sure the product kind of reveals our passion and our commitment. Um, and we also want to interact more with the community. We also want to make sure that you guys are heard. Uh, so I really enjoy having now 233 people joining in on this call. Uh, I'm going to give you a um, few tips and tricks on how to contact us going forward. So what I really want to do is I want to explain what pro integration in Microsoft really is. Who are we, what we do, and how we are set up. I also want to tell you about some of the changes we did to 2016 uh, with a focus on the features we have. I will also share some more information about what's coming in CU1 for BISC 2016 and obviously Microsoft's commitment to hybrid integration. Um, unfortunately, this is not the arena to share NDA related information, so uh, all those questions that might pop in are more than welcome and we'll be happy to, to talk to you later on. I'm going to show you as well how to interact with us even more. Um, we got our own Yammer page you can use, so I'll, I'll share the tips and tricks on how to join that as well. Other than that, you're more than welcome to um, to add questions or do uh, requests for features in the comments. We will take them back in and we will write them down and we'll track it going forward. So as you can see, this is kind of how, uh, how we're set up. The entire BOPI team is, um, is pretty big, so business application platforms and intelligence. Uh, our team is the one in the little red square, so pro integration, uh, aiming towards developers and and the hard techie people that's probably um, listening in now. And uh, just to address the question real quick, you will get a copy of this presentation. So within our team, the Azure API management is, is some of the teams or some of the products we have, including Logic Apps, and which went GA for not too long ago. We got Enterprise Integration Pack as well, and Bistock Server being one of these products. It's important that we align within Microsoft, so the reorg we did was to make sure that we could be agile and making sure our customers are heard, that our products are getting even better. So I like to say there's there's a reason why uh, Jim and the pro integration team decided to move in people like uh, John Fancy from the UK over here to Redmond to help drive the product, and then me with my family uh, from Norway over here to Redmond. So the commitment from Microsoft when it comes to integration in general, I'd say has never been better. Um, going forward, we hope to be able to do a lot more. We hope to be able to provide really, really good features um, and products that we'll be able to adopt and use and for you guys to sell to your customer, and especially in competes that we see around the world. So, like I said, we've got Logic Apps. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the technical sides of these products. I do know you guys are technical people. I could probably show you some awesome things you can do in Bistock Server, but I bet. Sorry, guys. I think Todd's audio sounds like it's dropped out there. I'm just going to see if I can... Uh... Check in with them that everything's okay. Let me see. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's come back okay, mate. You've gone again, Todd. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, you've come back, Todd. It's good now. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you, having, you having connectivity issues, or is it something I, else? I, might be my polycom messing around with me. So uh, if it does it again, I'll disconnect it and go on the mic on my Surface, which should be good, too. Okay. Um, just let me know if it happens again. 
Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll just jump back in if, if there's any problems, but Sorry, guys. This wouldn't be a good call if we didn't have any technical problems, right? Uh, it's either the demo ghost or there's something else. Uh, yeah, so what I just said on this, I don't know what you got, but I'm not going to go in depth on all these technologies. Logic Apps is our cloud integration platform. Basic Server is our on-prem integration platform. We got API management and we got Service Bus kind of as part of the team and a part of our commitments on the overall image of integration. We also got products like Stream Analytics, Data Factory up in Azure. Um, I used to work in Microsoft Sales in the past before I joined here over in Corp. Uh, we did have some customers asking, there's so many features up there that is overlapping and doing the same thing. Although some of these products do have some overlaps, doesn't mean that they you could use um, Data Factory for Logic App stuff or the other, other way around. They do have some overlapping features to it, and that's the reason they have to, uh, to do their meaning and their cost. Uh, Logic Apps is on the pro integration team together with BizTalk Server API Management and Service Bus. Um, or Service Bus is kind of like a tag along, but an important aspect of the story. BizTalk Server 2016, we've had, or you guys have probably seen this slide before, I just want to go through this. I do have an updated one I'm going to show you. Um, we had some commitments in the past. So for those of you who were at the Integration Summit in London earlier this year, you might have seen this. Uh, CTP1 came up in Q2. We got TAP and CTP2 running in Q3. And we actually have multiple customer running TAP program and are now in production with Best Stock 2016. We also have the RTM going forward, which is going to be at the end of the year. One of the key things we did, and this is pretty, I'd say pretty big when it comes to integration, and especially around BizTalk, and that was the support of all WSON and availability groups. We wanted to make sure that US customer could run BizTalk server high available up in Azure or on-prem. Uh, we removed kind of the way of using the old fashioned log shipping for disaster recovery and supporting the all WSON availability groups. Uh, we've said this a couple of times, and I'm going to emphasize this. You still need to do the backup job, so don't don't get rid of that. But the log shipping part to do DR, you can do with SQL Server 2016 with all this on and availability groups. Uh, we're updating and aligning with the latest release of um, the different platforms around there. BizDoc is a very strong and very big product that supports a lot of interfaces like SAP. We got Oracle, we got SQL, there's a ton of them. Um, we also made sure that we could support the newest and the latest ones. We also aligned with the next version of Windows Server 2016, Office, and Visual Studio 2015. Another great step, and I give a big heads up and, and applause to John Fancy and the engineering team on the capabilities to now use Logic Apps for BizTalk Server 2016 with a new Logic App adapter. This will also, people are asking, where is it? Where can we download it? BizTalk 2016 just went into RTM. The Logic App adapter will come when BizTalk goes GA. So there's still some time left, um, but you will get the Logic App adapter as soon as, as, soon as BizTalk goes live. Another thing, I don't know if Nino's on the call, this is the MVP Summit. I remember Nino explaining how he used to look in the past, and I guess a lot of you might have seen Nino Crudel's presentations. He's a funny Italian guy. Um, he doesn't have much hair, but he said in the past he used to have long, blonde, beautiful hair with blue eyes. And then he started working with BizTalk, and he started looking for schemas and using the schema selector, for instance, in the orchestration designer. And I've done that a couple of times in the past, too, and trying to find the right schema, you have to scroll right and left, and, and it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to find the right schema. So they, they spent some time to fix this. I'm going to show you some images of it. But a lot of the things we've been requesting and kind of not thinking would ever happen has actually happened in this release. Uh, great effort by the, by the engineering team. And, and for John, that was basically driving the, from the program management side uh, the entire show and made a lot of really, really good changes before I joined a couple of months ago. Um, other than that, there's a lot of related to the administration tools. People that know me in this call know I'm really passionate about BizTalk admins. Uh, I have in the past said that BizTalk devs are drag-and-drop developers. Um, we all know it's not completely true, 
but that doesn't mean we shouldn't focus on the operation side of BizDoc. BizDoc is a product that is running on a lot of clients worldwide. A lot of enterprise customers rely on BizDoc to be able to do their business and making sure that the administration side of this as well is aligning with what we expect for a good product coming from a vendor like Microsoft is very important. So that's why we made changes to the administration console and administration tools as well to simplify this. This is purely customer driven improvements made to the product. We get calls from you, we get emails, we get requests, service requests, whatever it is, and we take them in and we make sure we try our best to fix it. Some of the elements might not be as easy to do, um, might take longer time, but we're really committed to making sure you guys have a good experience with BizDoc Server as an integration platform. So 2016 release is now SHA-2 supported. Uh, coming out in CU1 will be SHA-2 certified as well through Drummond Group. Um, we also made changes to the SAP and NCO support. A big question and a big ask from you guys was shared access signature support for Service Bus. We made sure we brought that in as well. Being able to search and filter on artifact names, super friendly for bigger, bigger customers or even the small ones where you actually need to find something. Did I install this DLL? What versions are I running? It's easy to find them. We also made sure that you can change the settings for multiple hosts, simplifying that. And one of the big requests, we used to do this with PowerShell in the past, we used to do it with different types of Visual Basic scripts, but being able to select on multiple suspended messages and save them to file. So making that day-to-day -day easier. I've seen a lot of Bistock environments around the world, and there were people going in and spending 10, 15, hours, 15 minutes a day, maybe even more hours, just exporting messages and sending them out. Uh, obviously, there's better ways of doing it if it's on a regular daily basis. But if there's a night where something fails, 150 messages fails, and you have to go in and manually export 150 messages and then send it to someone, that would take a lot of time in the past if you didn't script it. So being able to do that in the product, easy to do, right-click, save to file, and then basically select multiple files makes that easier as well. Then when it comes to mapping, we talked about the resizable windows for schema selection dialogues. Um, also the map level config for XSL compile transform versus XSL transform. Another big question from you guys was order delivery for dynamic send ports. Uh, we listened and we, we did our changes needed to do it. We also improved the uh, MLP adapter, helping out with the binding import and export. As I said, if you guys have seen me present before, I've spoken a lot about tracking, a lot about how to import, export, how to do the administration side of things. We also made sure this was easier and more user friendly. Um, you can decide if you want to have the tracking turned on in development, but when you export it and import it in production, you can turn it off. So if you don't need all the tracking, you don't need the message before and after processing uh, in production, but you do need it in dev, you don't have to go in and change it in depth before you export and import it into BizDoc in production. We also made changes to the SFTP uh, adapter. Um, we did that to make it more compatible with more platforms out there. Uh, we added better traces and error info. Um, we made changes to the file adapter for overriding temporary files. Patching and orchestration performance has increased. And then overall admin console and engine performance increased. What you also might have seen is we made changes to the icons. When you when you ship a product like this and you made the changes we've done, John Fancy took a really good call, making sure that we we tried to change the um, we tried to change the UI and the experience of it to show off that this is actually us doing more than a little. Um, so um, kudos to uh, to John Fancy for making sure we did that as well. As you might have seen, this is some part of the changes for the icons. Um, some I, I got one guy saying, why did you remove all the colors? Why did you do this and why did you do that? But it's also a lot of the accessibility and making sure things look nicer and look better. Um, we also wanted to make sure that when we do elements and improve it, we want to make sure we do it all over the older lines. So making sure the icons aligned more and made more sense to the product itself. 
this is a quickly, you can see behind her, I'm in the orchestration designer. Uh, I'm selecting the schema for one of the uh, artifacts I'm using and then you get this pop-up where you can easily go in and you can read a fully qualified name, the type name, you can go and check your different references. So making the entire experience of selecting the right schema way easier than it was in the past. So if you haven't tried this out yet, I definitely advise you to do so. Um, you can find the 2016 release uh, available on MSDN if you have the right subscription. You can also go online on Azure and set up a, a BISC 2016 Enterprise VM. This is again within the um, orchestration designer, so the icons had a refresh here as well. Uh, trying to make sure it looks uh, looks better and and are more appealing than what it was in the past. And then this is probably why most of you guys jumped in the call. You want to know what's happening going forward. Um, we want to be able to share more with you. We want to be able to give you a more idea of what we're doing, but we also need your feedback. It's it's one thing deciding based on history we have, but it's also very important that we align those uh, requirements with what the customers expect and want. So within CU1, we'll be fully shot to certified through Drummond Group. Uh, we made improvements to the SAP adapter for multiple connections. Um, there's also improvements for the BizTalk administration tooling. We also did improvements in error handling um, across different sets in, in BizTalk. And this is all based on the feedback we got from customers. Todd, I think your audio might have gone again there. Sorry, guys, just bear with us a minute while we get Todd to um, get his audio back. Sorry guys, can you hear me now? I yeah, we can hear you again, mate. It's a bit, um, it's a bit sort of echoey. Sounds like you're quite far away. Um, yeah. So, feel free to add a comment if you can't hear me anymore. But you could say that I'm talking now. So going back to the support lifecycle of this dog. Yeah, to told we can't hear you very well though. Can you can you hear me okay? Because we it, we can't hear you, but it sounds like you're miles away. So I got the. Um, can you hear me now, Michael? Ah uh, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do it this way, so um, I might lose you guys, but at least you guys can hear me. Um, so yeah, going back to the sport life cycle. Sorry, guys. Um, this is 2016. We haven't added this yet. That will come with OGA. Told, yeah. told the, the audio is really, really um, echoey and got a lot of background noise on it. Better now? Yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, awesome, yeah, sorry. Man. Sorry, guys. Um, so we haven't added the BISO 2016 yet. It will come as soon as we get uh, GA on it. Uh, but we do have added the different ones. Uh, I know there's a lot of old BizTalk environments running there. Now is the time to go and upgrade. Now is the time to start planning. We know it takes time to move all your applications up to 2016. Um, we do support in-placement upgrade going two versions, so from 2013 up to 2016. But with the functionality with SQL Server 2016 and, um, and all the other aspects when it comes to Windows Server 2016 and the improvements made to those products, I strongly suggest you were spinning up a new environment and getting ready to meet everything happening in 2016 going forward.
I'll um, share a little bit more with you guys. You might have seen something similar to this before. This talk server will continue to update with CUs every quarter. So for all the services, all the um, BizTalk versions we have out, we'll have a CU every three months um, for the next couple of years until they end mainstream support. And now I want to talk about Logic App. Logic App refreshes once every week. So as you can see here, there's a lot more blue dots. Uh, API management refreshes once every four weeks. That's the purple dots you see up here. The big reason for this is obviously from the cloud, we do control more. It's easier for us to add functionality. When it comes to on-premise products, it's a different way of doing it. We still want to make sure you guys are aligned, that we do the right improvements. You guys come with feedback, you find bugs or whatever it is. We want to make sure we can address them in CUs. Um, but when it comes to logic apps, we do have a user voice page. We can go in, you can request stuff, you can request features you think we need to, um, to provide good enterprise integrations and integration in general. Uh, API management loves the same thing. Uh, they have their user voice page. We can go in and request changes. For BizTalk server, currently we don't have a user voice page. Um, we haven't really decided on doing it that way, but we do have decided that we want to be able to share and work even more with the customers and partners we have out there. Um, and to do that, I'm going to show you a little bit later. Going back to the future comparison of Vistock, I could have added a lot more here, but then Vistock 2013 or 2 and 2013 would just disappear from the list. Uh, I still wanted to have them on and show that we did we did a lot of changes. Uh, we've had feedback from customers in TAP saying that this could potentially be the best release of Bestock since 2006. And um, for us working on the product, it sounds really, really good. It's great feedback. Uh, and that's the type of feedback we want. But we also want the feedback that we want this, we want to see this. We, we think it's important to interact with our customers and our partners. Uh, and making sure that we continue to provide the best functionality, not only for BizTalk, but for all our products within Pro Integration. So that means logic apps, API management, and we can even help out routing the service bus requests uh, over to the service bus team. So as you see, we have the SQL Server on uh, always on support. We now, for the first time, support high availability with disaster recovery up in Azure running BizTalk. Uh, the Logic Apps adapter is very powerful and lets you connect to Logic App. You've seen a presentation of this in the past. If not, you can go and, uh, and check out uh, on YouTube on Ignite sessions. Um, I'll make sure we can provide you some links to that as well, some more content to what I've been saying. Um, but there is there is a very easy way. So if you have Salesforce already, you can easily connect your BizTalk on-prem and push the messages through Salesforce uh, by using Logic Apps. We also have the shared access signature support for Service Bus, um, and we did a lot of changes to the admin console, one of them being the remodel of the export and import of the binding files. Like I said, looking forward for your BizTalk Server 2016, uh, we made changes to uh, our Seternet connector uh, based on feedback we got from customers. Uh, we also made changes to the SAP adapter based on feedback we got from you customers to make sure that we meet the standards and requirements you have for SAP and doing integration with it. And we do continue having a focus on maybe the thing that is most important when you're doing integration, and that is better together strategy. So Jim, her, uh, the principal group manager here, is really pulling in a really great effort, making sure all the teams are aligned. Um, he has a great background of actually doing this for different companies, and, and that really helps. Uh, bridging all the gaps we've had in the past. Um, and also that we can leverage the other Azure services we have up um, and making sure that we, in the end, provide you with really strong, powerful incentives for start using Microsoft integration. Maybe you'll start off with the hybrid scenario. Maybe you'll stay on BizTalk Server for a long time. Maybe you'll jump straight into Logic Apps. We want to make sure the story can go everywhere. So if you want to have the cloud focus within your company or you already have it, then we need to make sure that we can align with what our customers are expecting. Um, 
like I said in the past, we can't give you everything, but getting the features and, and requests from you really helps us drive the product in the right directions and prioritizing what we need to do to make sure that we are on top. As you can see on the bottom here, this is kind of the updated going forward. Uh, Q4 will have BizTalk 2016 going GA, which means general available. Uh, we'll have the Logic App Adapter and BizTalk 2013 R2 CU5 coming out so soon. Uh, including there, you can see in Q1, we'll ship the CU1 and CU2 for BizTalk 2016 and the CU6 for BizTalk 2013. And that doesn't mean we'll slow down. Uh, I could have added everything we're doing for Logic Apps and API management here as well, but based on the focus of this session, I decided to not do that. Um, there is a lot more people working on those products that could probably even do that presentation even better than me. Um, I know in the past, BizTalk hasn't been the most visible when it comes to the roadmap and what we're doing. Um, we do try to change that by giving you this session saying that we do actually have commitments for BizTalk going forward and, and for Logic Apps API management. Um, and, and any feedback is, is very much valuable for us. Then we have the questions about thinking about migration. I did talk about this. If you're running an older version of BizTalk, if you're planning to do hybrid integration, um, we now support um, newer versions of products, SAP. Um, we expanded the FTP and SFTP. Uh, we support uh, high availability and disaster recovery, both on-premise and in the cloud by using SQL Server Analysis Services. Uh, sorry not analysis services, availability groups. Uh -huh. We also um, support the connection towards Logic Apps by using the Logic Apps adapter for BizTalk. Um, so if you have interactions or integrations you want to do with Salesforce, uh, you can easily do that with having BizTalk still on-prem and leveraging that capability. We used to have a saying when we did sales that our BizTalk, or in general, IT has kind of shifted into being more business focused and business minded. Um, one of those focuses is that we need to help business expand and do better. Uh, Microsoft has a great way of saying it that our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And to do that, we want to be able to give you guys better experiences, better services, better products uh, by listening to you and making sure that we can help you empower. Um, some of that is our solution up in Azure Logic Apps, which is general available. We also have in preview now the Enterprise Integration Pack, um, where we have um, several really good and powerful ways of doing integration or enterprise integration in the cloud. Uh, you can leverage artifacts such as maps and schemas. And like you've seen in, in my previous slide is we do have a really more rapid feature release than for the on-premise products. And it's partially on the way this is built. Um, it's easier to ship features uh, in Logic Apps than what it is to ship something on-prem. I said uh, that we need you guys. We need your feedback. We do have a page called Azure Advisors. I know a few of you guys are probably already members there, uh, where we have uh, a group called Integration um, or Azure Integration. Um, you can sign up to this page and go in. We need to make sure you have the right NDA. Uh, when you do, we can start interacting more with you and we can start getting your feedback. Um, so John uh, Fancy, one of the other PMs for, for BizTalk, uh, also said that this is a great way for us to interact more with you and do pools and get get your feedback, uh, making sure that it's still under NDA, which means we can share a little bit more information with you um, and make sure we align more with the products. So on this side, you can help participate and help uh, to bring new capabilities to BizTalk v Next, but also for um, logic apps or, or API management that might show up in, in the Azure Advisory Board. I'm not going to spend too much more time. I've given you a lot of information about what's coming uh, in CU1, how we're aligning on the release cadences of both BizDog Logic Apps and API management, which is products within the Pro Integration team. Um, 
We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, if you want to go in and read more about us or ask questions there as well, we're more than happy to get more followers and, and reply back. So both of these are driven by the product group. And uh, I guess I'll leave the word over to, um, to you, Michael. Hey, Todd. Thanks for that. Really, really cool. Um, we've got loads of questions, mate. Um, how, how much time have I got you for before I uh, before you've got to go off to do other stuff? <laughs> On the fourth of October, one of the episodes of .NET Rocks, Dustin Metzger from the Microsoft Product Group was the guest, and he said his team looks after aging and mature software that essentially isn't getting a lot of enhancement. It was mentioned that he owns BizTalk. This made it sound like BizTalk's living on the island of left behind software. How does that fit with what you, you guys are doing? Because that kind of contradicts. So I think this is a great pitch option, opportunity for you to tell us how, how obviously that's not necessarily the case going off what you've just been saying. No, I'd say it's funny that people might say this stuff uh, without actually talking to the product group. There might have been some a conversation I'm not included in, but to put it simply, if I were Microsoft, I wouldn't hire um, a veteran like John Fancy and take him from the UK and bring him over to um, to the US. He got a family and two kids. And the same with me, I got four kids. And if Microsoft weren't committed to BizTalk or integration, uh, I don't think that will be the right way for Microsoft to do it. Um, and then obviously with the 2016 release coming out, with, uh, and I could, I could agree that 